welcome to Creators and Keepers, the podcast of Cultureverse.org. Cultureverse is a 501c3 nonprofit organization which exists at the intersection of art and technology. We seek to use 3D technology and immersive digital experiences to bring unseen art and artifacts to the light of day. We serve the creators and keepers of art, culture, and knowledge. Today, our guest is Doug Coombe. Doug Coombe is an Ann Arbor and Detroit-based music and editorial photographer. He moved from longtime record store employee at School Kids, Wazoo, and Encore Records in Ann Arbor to photographer when he started to document the Detroit music scene in the early 90s. He started his photojournalism career with Orbit magazine and moved to Metro Times in 1999. In addition to writing and photographing for Metro Times, Doug has photographed for Ghostly Records, Third Man Records, Rolling Stone, Mojo, Wax Poetics, and so many more. Cultureverse recently worked on several projects with Doug. It included a physical gallery exhibition entitled Last Night a Camera Saved My Life with a companion virtual gallery built using Sagan Works as well as a VR experience. Welcome to Creators and Keepers, Doug. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's been so much fun to work with you. Um, you know, I've seen your work in Concentrate and Metro Times and in so many just publications that I see either coming, mostly nowadays coming through my computer screen at me. Um, and, you know, so for me, your name is one that has just been part of my world for a long time. <laughs> And it was um, during one of our gallery exhibitions where um, our colleague Brad, you know, kind of like did the little thumb wave over at <laughs> you and was like, you might want to work with Doug. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you and Matt hit it off and had conversations. And the reason that I think you're such a special person to work with for us is that, you know, our mission is to help unseen things be seen and help artists get a showing, right? And, and we can do so many more things with virtual experiences because the possibilities are endless, right? And your mission as a photographer seems to be and is, we've talked a lot about this, is giving um, more attention to musicians that kind of deserve a little bit more attention. So let's talk about that spot right there. When did you first realize that you could use your camera as a tool of love and support and uh, amplification? I love how you said uh, having or making unseen things seen. Mm -hmm. So when I was starting out in the early 90s, it was pre-digital and it was film. And yeah, a lot of bands, if they weren't famous or well-known, weren't getting coverage in local press or media. Um, yeah, and you frequently just wouldn't see a photographer out there. So I just started bringing my camera to shows. I really had no, didn't exactly know what I was doing and had really no plans to be a photographer, become an artist. but. Um, just through persistence and love, I guess. Yeah, I just started taking some good photos. I had a couple photos wind up on some album covers, um, Big Chief's Mac Avenue Skull Game and the first outrageous cherry record. And that inspired me to study photography and at Washtenaw Community College. And it was through studying photography um, that I gained a solid background. And I happened to walk into the Metro Times the day Bruce Giffen, their amazing, talented staff photographer, quit. and got hired on the spot and fortunately I had the background to know what I was doing. <laughs> and, but yeah, it was really just, um, yeah, the music that just really inspired me then and still inspires me today. It's still my favorite thing to photograph, so. I love that, you know, part of, um, part of that story of being in the right place at the right time was being prepared for yes. what came next, right? You loved your, you loved your craft so much that you honed it and you sought additional education and then you were ready and you could jump right in. And, you know, since, um, like, you're everywhere. Like, you are <laughs> everywhere. I saw you, I mean, at festivals. I've seen you at Ann Arbor Summer Festival. Um, we've, you know, we've crossed paths so many times. And, you know, you're just, you really are everywhere. You have photographed so many people and community leaders and musicians in Washtenaw and Wayne Counties and I'm sure beyond. Um, so your archives must be amazing. Um, tell me about, I guess, when you are working behind your camera, what's happening in your mind? And, <laughs> and I guess, 
you know, you're always so intense and you're so focused and yet you're so affable and friendly and, and also very kind while you're working. So talk about what that's like when you're behind the camera. Um, as a photographer, FOMO, fear of missing out, is a very real thing. Mm -hmm. I think for all the good pictures I've gotten over my career, there's many I still can remember uh, missing. So definitely just trying to capture great moments. But, you know, it's it, when you get a great shot, I mean, frequently when you take it, you know it, and that's kind of its own reward. Um, so I really love doing that. And it's funny because when I went into photography, I won't lie, I feel like my main motivation was I just wanted to be up front at the show. Like, I didn't want to be that dude, like, at the back trying to watch the show, you know, from like 100 feet away. I wanted to be up front. And that, to this day, I still feel very lucky and fortunate and love that I get to do that as a photographer. But to me, the, my favorite thing about photography that I love now that I did not guess going in is just all the people I meet. Because my camera is a ticket into all these, like, amazing random worlds that I wouldn't go to. I mean, just... Yesterday I was at the Ann Arbor Fire Department downtown, which was really cool. And I just, I've met so many amazing people, learned from them, but also just made so many really wonderful friendships over the years with my camera that that is the best part about photography. Taking cool pictures and documenting really great people and maybe shining some light or bringing attention to great bands is really cool, but I am incredibly fortunate. And I met my wife <laughs> taking pictures too. So yeah, it's the, the camera's been very good to me. So. That's awesome. I love the idea of the camera as a access pass. Yeah. Right? You're I mean, you are working a lot of the times on behalf of organizations or, you know, media entities, but you are also an independent photographer just mm -hmm. doing this because you love it and in some instances, right? And so you get to go places where you might not otherwise have access. Um, so I, I love that you started out as a record store employee and kind <laughs> of moved into this world. Um, Tell me about that transition in, like, into professional photography, right? Like, what, what does that mean to you to be a professional photographer? Um, one, I guess I just, I want to go back to just picking up the camera at the record store quickly. It was funny. I wish I knew who this person was, and maybe if you're out there watching, please let me know who you are because I owe my career to you. But somebody did come in one day and ask me how many shows I'd been to. And just working at a record store, you would get guest listed to a lot of shows and ran off a bunch of shows and this person was like you go to a lot of shows and I'm like oh yeah I guess I do so that's why I started bringing a camera to shows was just I thought I go to a lot of shows I should just take a camera but um, I transitioned to a uh, full-time photographer in 2008 which was a very scary year to do that the economy was not doing well but um, did a lot of work with the Metro Times and my editor Brian Smith who I love and adore dearly um, and yeah and then 2010 started working with Concentrate and it's just kind of been full go ever since then. Transitioning 2008 to full-time photographer that was a really rough time for record stores like record stores were closing they were not doing well they're kind of hanging on and now all those record stores that hung in there are like doing great like the, I mean they've slowly been doing well but the pandemic really was great for record stores people were home and wanting to buy records and the records like you know a security blanket you know or just mm -hmm. a source of comfort so it's great to see now that you know when i left working at record stores in 2008 when things weren't going great at record stores now they're going really good and that makes me incredibly happy so i'm gonna like go on a slight detour here for a second because i'm very curious um one of my passions is having you know ex building experiences where um, people can come together using arts as a catalyst and I'm just realizing that record stores are that that place for a lot of people um, What do you see the role of a record store in the health? What is the health? Um, I guess I'm sorry What is the what does the role of the record store play in the health of the music community in general? It's a huge part of the community. I worked you know Encore Records where I worked at was the last record store I worked at there were so many amazing musicians that worked there Fred Thomas Mike Dykehouse, One Below, Tad Mullenix, I mean, it's just on and on. Elliot Bergman from Nomo. So there were so many great musicians, but it's also a place for, you know, local musicians to sell their albums and, like, in you know, ne inadvertently network and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. to me, uh, during the pandemic, one thing I've come back to a lot is just the power of the arts, of arts communities to bring people together and change individuals' lives and change the world. Obviously, I feel the camera has changed my life in a very positive way, but um, looking through my archives I w and writing stories, I dealt with um, 
the early Detroit hardcore community, the White Stripes in 99 and the garage rock scene, um, the beginning of Detroit Electronic Music Festival and um, Slum Village's fantastic volume two record, which is the hip hop revolution of Jay Dilla. So anyways, I look at 2000, these small little arts communities that were just a bunch of music nerds and like they all changed the world. I mean, look at the White Stripes and Garage Rock, look at Jay Dilla, you know, look at DEMF and movement, like they just changed the world. So I feel, and especially in this divided times that we sadly live in, music has just this ability to bring everyone together and to just, yeah, inspire people like me and just change the world. So yeah, um, huge fan of just music festivals, concerts, and record stores. I think they're a very powerful force of good in this world. Amazing. So along the line of, you know, kind of bringing people together, um, I want to talk just for a little bit about the physical exhibition that we have of yours. Um, it's through July 24th, 2022 at 309 South Main Street. It may be closed by the time this podcast comes out. Um, what was so lovely, number one, there was a lot of work on the walls. There was a lot of <laughs> photographs on the walls Thank and a you. lot of really beautiful faces there representing a diverse array of people from Ann Arbor and Ipsy and a little bit beyond, but we mo mostly focused on our, our geographically local audience or our musicians. Um, but the opening night reception was so lovely because it was a homecoming for so many people and a gathering of musicians and there was such a lovely vibe. And that, I think it really hits home that, you know, that, that personal mission of yours and mine to bring people together, um, as well as, you know, the mission of our organization to bring people together and help um, unseen things be seen, uh, really was very well executed that night. Um, talk a little bit about how that felt to have your work on the walls, to have um, basically your, your photographs come to life because a lot of the people who were in those photos were in the room. Um, I am so grateful to all of you for all the incredible hard work you put in, but also, yes, for indulging me for putting a lot of photos up because I really just wanted to shine a lot of love on this amazing community. And I'm, as everybody knows, I photograph Detroit a lot too, and the Detroit music scene is pretty well documented these days. It wasn't so much when I started out. Um, but yeah, Ann Arbor and Ipsy are kind of part of the great southeastern music scene, but don't always get the same amount of attention. So to just be able to shine a lot of light on great Ann Arbor and Ipsy musicians specifically was really wonderful. Um, for me too, I think part of you know my mission to <laughs> have a mission in community is you know, I was a psych major at U of M, and in one of our classes, we were studying zero-sum games, which politically, I think that's the age we live in right now. Mm -hmm. So I became really interested in win-win scenarios, and I felt like, you know, a lot of these bands, like, I was just taking pictures because I loved them, and I thought they were great. There was not a paycheck in it at all, but, you know, it kind of helped them out, and I think me just working with good artists kind of helped me, you know, just get good jobs, too. So even if somebody didn't pay me for photos, I felt like it really paid off. And there are a multitude of examples I could go on with that. So yeah, for me, it was just, you know, a, a good win-win night for everybody. And yeah, it just made me incredibly happy to see people come together who haven't seen one another in the past couple of years. And yeah, I'm just so grateful you let me put a ridiculous <laughs> number of pictures on the wall. And my photo professor, uh, Jenny Baker from Washtenaw Community College, said it all looked okay, which made me happy too. Oh, <laughs> so, good. We yeah. get her endorsement. Yes. That's so good. So with the uh, physical exhibit, we've got some things that will live um, that uh, live in tandem with it, and also will continue on uh, past the the physical exhibit into you know infinity. Uh, as long as the servers hold up, um, is uh, a couple virtual experiences. Um, we built a virtual gallery um, using our, our software partner, uh, Saganworks, and um, that was a really fun process because um, Matt Grossman <laughs> and I uh, and you were able to go to the Blind Pig and scan it. Um, for those who don't know Ann Arbor, uh, talk a little bit about what the Blind Pig and what it, what it means to your work in particular. I'm so, uh, one, that was just an incredibly fun uh, thing to do with you guys. But no, to me that was important too because as someone who's documented the music scene for a long time, you know, one of the bittersweet parts of it is great music venues come and go and great festivals come and go. So 
you know, great venues that endure and festivals that endure are to be celebrated. So, you know, the fact that we're here in downtown Ann Arbor, we're within a stone's throw of each other. We have three, like, stunning music venues. We have Blue Llama, we have The Ark, and we have Blind Pig. Makes me so happy. So I think to celebrate, you know, not only one of the great venues of Ann Arbor, but a venue where I've definitely photographed over a thousand shows <laughs> and you know, like, the back of my hand was really great to document. And there was a time just a couple of years ago where the future of the blind pig was in question where it went up for sale and I honestly thought that was just going to get turned into condos so I'm so glad it's still there so same and so I guess and to talk a little bit more about what we did there um, so we, we used a Matterport scanner we scanned the space we scanned the green room uh, where there's so many signatures on, signatures on the wall so we used our technology to kind of uh, ca capture and, and document, but we also then turned those scans uh, with the help of our digital artist, Joe Grabowski, into a virtual environment that you can then place an infinite number of, of photos, because as we know, there's a limit to how many pieces we can hang on the wall in a <laughs> there, physical there gallery. Was. <laughs> um, and we're so excited to give you that platform where you can put an infinite number of, of photos in a virtual space. and. Uh, curate your own exhibitions, you know, on into the future. Um, tell me a little bit about what, kind of like, what possibilities has that opened in your mind before, and had you considered doing something like that? I had not considered doing something like that, but um, that was part of the attraction of me working with Cultureverse, because I'd heard about the work you'd done with the Stearns Collection at U of M, this amazing collection of musical instruments that I've never, that very few people have ever seen. So. For me, for the physical show, I felt very bad for certain musicians and artists that I love that there wasn't room on the wall. Mm -hmm. So now there's, you know, in theory, limitless room to just put a lot of photos out there. And one of the questions I get all the time as a photographer is like, where are these photos going? And, you know, I take so many photos that I don't get to share with people. So for me to just share like, Here's a couple hundred like Fred Thomas Saturday looks good to me photos. You want to see like all the photos I took over of Athletic Mike League over like the last 20 years? Here you go. So for me to be able not only to share lots of photos from very impactful musicians from around here, but also just a lot of different musicians because there are so many great musicians in this area. I really do think Detroit, southeastern Michigan is one of the great music cities, areas in the world. So for me to just kind of have this huge digital like love letter to the city I've been in, you know, for decades is fantastic. So yeah, that's very appealing to me just to be, because so many, t I take a lot of pictures that people never get to see. So just the ability to share them and celebrate these people I photographed and have inspired me and made me who I am is amazing. I love it. Um, well, thank you so much for chatting with us, Doug, and for sharing your work with um, our organization and our audience. And um, thank you for bringing your audience to <laughs> us. And um, I think we had uh, we had a lot of fun, and it really was all done with love too. So we appreciate your your attitude and your enthusiasm, and really just the care and consideration you put into all your subjects mm -hmm. and into what we all built together. Th uh, thank you, all of you. Yeah, uh, my favorite part of the show was actually just getting to work with all of you guys and get to know all of you guys. So thank you. Mm, thank you. You guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. We like what we do. <laughs> <laughs> we have fun. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Cultureverse is sponsored by Art Train, Fractured Atlas, and is a 501c3 nonprofit organization based in Ann Arbor, Michigan. You can learn more about our organization, our projects, and how to get involved by visiting cultureverse.org. Our production staff consists of Matt Grossman, Shanley Carlton, Dave Sharp. I'm Aubrey Martinson. Our music is Anahita and is by Dave Sharp and Rowan Bose.